So Russell O'Toole is our umpiring development manager and he is going to take you through everything you need to know um, to incorporate umpiring into the work that you do with, um, with a little bit of fun as well. So everyone make Russ feel welcome. Good. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, while I'm presenting to you, having been a school teacher for 20 years, I'm also going to try and reflect on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, just so we learn about setup and preparation and components of the session, okay? So hopefully when you were with Ben outside with the inflatables, you may have seen me just setting up our work area that we'll go to in half an hour's time. So in terms of the GDO, what does that mean? That means our session should flow really, really smoothly from inside to outside. Okay, my resources are there. Deliberately going to hold back the handouts until afterwards because that they contain some screenshots. But um, I encourage you to use a bit of an icebreaker activity too with your kids because as soon as the kids see that you're genuine and relaxed, you know, that becomes infectious. So I'm not going to stand up here and treat you like a, a class of kids. I want to engage with you. I've got three key questions for you in a moment. But um, maybe as my icebreaker, I'd like you to grab your notepads, grab your biros and write the name of any AFL field umpire, please. Don't worry, I've got two more questions. I only want you to get two out of three correct. So already, I, so reflection, I'm engaging the audience. So already I'm not behind this. I've given you guys and girls a challenge. I might move this was. AFL field umpire, who's got one? Good stuff. Oh, uh, 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 that was my next question. Who's got two? Anyone extended themselves? Who's got more than two? Now you're only asked to write down one. Who did we get? I heard Ray's or eight. Scott McLaren, about 20 years ago, that's okay. <laughs> Troy Pennell, number 28. Good work. Oh, that's okay, that's cool. Anyone else? Lee Fisher. Lee Fisher, number three. Josh Mather. Josh Mather. Um, Jordan Bannister. Jordan Bannister. Thank you for trying. Josh Mather. Field umpire? Pretty sure. No, I'll take that. Um, Haven't heard of him, but I'll take it. So, okay, Fisher. reflection. Not sure of an incorrect answer but we need to make sure that that participant gets encouraged to join in again by me not saying, no, that's bullshit, let's move on. Okay, so we encourage participation and I accept that, although I haven't heard of him. That's okay. Anyone else? Who's number 18? This is still the icebreaker, quick. Who's number 18 field umpire? Gets in the news a lot. Got a nickname? Razor. Name's been mentioned already. Say again? Razor. Yeah, Ray Chamberlain. Okay, second icebreaker. Write down the four members Ready? Four members of 1D. Quick. One Direction. Why? <laughs> Nothing to do with footy. I just heard it being discussed over by the, the, the cream scones and there were a few guys admitting actually to seeing 1D recently, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know who and why you'd admit that, but that's okay. No, I don't care. That was rubbish. Forget that one. That was rubbish. That was just to, just to engage. Okay, ladies and gents, 60 minutes of umpiring as GDOs, let, let's, let's put the serious face on now. GDOs, we're, we're gonna be offered by Lauren a heap of umpiring and coaching and skill acquisition opportunities. So today I'm just gonna speak fairly broadly and philosophically by throwing three key questions to you, you answering and then me sharing a couple of results with you that maybe similar to what you've written down, or maybe just a little different to what you've written down. Let me sh firstly show you a promo, just to show you how important we think our role in the game is. Tell me what you saw. Umpires. Umpires. What sort of umpires did you see? 
Field, goal, field, 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 boundary. Professional, local. Yeah, say again. Levels, all different levels like professional, local. Professional, community umpires. And then be a bit more descriptive for the Boys umpires you saw. Yeah. yeah, both genders. Multicultural. Multicultural. So we think that umpiring is for anyone who wants to have a crack. 23,000 umpires around the nation involve themselves in weekly umpiring at community level and of course at, at the respective state league levels and of course at the elite level. So with the acquisition of 30 more of you today, maybe we can bump that tally up by 30 already because you're going to be smashed with umpiring opportunities. Um, yeah, multicultural, cross-gender, um, different body shapes. That's okay. That's it. We can cope with that because we can give them a couple, couple of flags if they're aged and if they're not built like us. We, the game will still cater for those participants. Okay, pens and paper, paper ready, please. I'd like to engage one more time for three, three key questions. Where we're going to have a look at, we're going to have a look at um, qualities, qualities and idiosyncrasies that may may be possessed by umpires. First question, broadly and philosophically speaking, and let's speak AFL elite. Let's speak VFL state league, and let's speak about the local park near where you live. Saturday afternoon in April through September, community footy. Give me a couple of key words that the game expects of umpires. And make this really, really big adult words, please. I'm gonna accept whatever you say, and then I'm gonna show you a few of oh, what, what I reckon the game expects of umpires. Fairness? Yeah, 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 just spend, oh, thank you. Yeah, That's thank a, you. a great prompt. So now let's spend 30 seconds jotting down our own contributions and probably everyone write down the word fairness. Share with the person next to you. So broadly, philosophical. Hey, and when you think of it, not just footy. Could be soccer, could be basketball, could be hockey. Could be darts. Probably not darts. Okay, what did we get? We heard fairness. Let's just, maybe someone over here yell out one, please. Responsibility and professionalism, I heard. Consist consistency, I heard. Integrity. Integrity, I heard. Manage the game well. Manage the game well. I'd like to ask you what you mean by well. Like, as long as being fair and consistent as well, they're still looking around and making sure all the players are safe and doing the right thing and they've got a duty of care of being an umpire, so they've got to not only watch the play but watch around and make sure everyone's safe. Swap positions with you. <laughs> Fantastic. You mentioned a word there that's going to be so critical in three slides time. <coughs> I'll come back to it in a minute. But all of what you said spot on. Any words over here that haven't been said yet? Neutral. Understanding of the rules. Neutral. Understanding of the... The rules. Of the can game. we call them laws? Yeah. Laws of the game? Yeah. Good. Supportive. Supportive. In a Coaching. different way. Coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mentor. At different levels. Mentor. Me umpire mentor program. My word. How, how can we get these youngsters or the inexperienced umpires through the game without an applicable mentor. Have so that, oh, so there you was have more? have control of the game as well. So yeah. if something goes out of hand, you've got control of it, you don't have control of it. One of these? Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to have an opportunity outside in 20 minutes time to demonstrate control of the game. Might only be for a couple of minutes, but yeah, one of these is our best friend. So, so they need to be pretty like, um, thick skin because they're going to get a lot of abuse. Absolutely, yeah. And we don't let that crap worry us. In fact, the biggest bake I ever got, uh, community footy, uh, I laugh about now, and the guy that delivered it was the first one to buy me a beer after the game. So it just shows you how fickle supporters can be as long as we're focused on what, what we need to do. So I, you don't need to drop these down because I've got these on a handout. Need to be impartial, okay? We don't favour our kid brother who's playing on the under nines just because he hasn't got a kick. We'll come to that point a bit later, but we need to be totally and absolutely impartial. Someone discuss that word for me. What do you reckon that's up there for? Who should we, who should we demonstrate respect to? Players, the game, coaches. The game, players, the coaches. Everyone involved. Supporters. Yep, school board attendance, the interchange stewards, you've forgotten. Supporters, mainly. Each other. Mainly each other, and mainly the players. Because if we don't say please and thank you, we're not going to get it back to us. Okay? 
So we need to demonstrate respect to earn respect. And I was down at Warrnambool last night and a lad was doing a, a coaching drill and he was setting the mark, line of the kick, backed off, and only 15 year old lad, and he said the words, thank you, to the guy on the mark. I called him aside, I said, Aaron, what were the two most important words you said? Straighten up, please. Back five metres, keep the area clear. I said, no. Two best words you said were thank you, because it just demonstrated respect. So, you know, no need to put our whistle on, put our match day face on, and go out there and think we're in the military. We just need to engage. We just need to talk to the players like we're talking to each other now. That's all they want. I think they've got to mention, someone in the back mentioned integrity. The value, the morals, the ethics of the game we need to uphold at whatever level. I think that was the first word mentioned and shared. Yeah, and that goes without saying. And doesn't mean to say that my five words are more important to the ones came, coming from the audience. They were all equally important and may fall under one of these banners anyway. And if I had room, I could put those up around just to demonstrate respect to your contributions. Second question. So we're now going to drill down to the umpire. And for a moment, let's think the elite. Let's think the national AFL competition. What individual qualities do you think an umpire should display on match day? Jot down three bullet points, please. Oh, I didn't say, sorry, they all have to start with the same letter. Oh. <laughs> well, aren't we on the right track? How did you know they all had to start with C? <laughs> Giving you a couple of clues. Look at all these badges on your shirts. You're a sporty group, obviously, which is cool. Okay. Got to start with C. What did you come up with? Confidence. Yep. Consistence. Yep. Composure. Yep. This is great. Communication. Huh? Communication. Absolutely. One more. Can we get it? Considerate. Haven't got it. Should have. Thank you. Competence. I guess that's what we're talking about. I'll just make a note. Excuse me. Include the word considerate on slide four. She'll do that for me. So C words, not the obvious C word. Effective. <laughs> Be an effective communicator. We got communicator here earlier but we need to be a deliberate and effective communicator. And that means a strength of voice, and it means really visible eye contact, and it means a bit of, a bit of guts, a bit of courage. Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah. So, manners and respect. So if there's an opportunity to say thank you or please, don't hesitate to throw in those words. Hugely important. I don't reckon anyone shared that word, do we? Oh, what well up? He did. Massively important. Even if you're not sure whether it went between the big post and the little post, or the big post and the big post, that signal is going to be so critically important. That confidence that you're displaying with whatever you decide as a goalie, boundary, or fieldy. So have the courage of your convictions and be confident. I think that's got a mention already. And don't get wrapped up. Don't get wrapped up in the excitement of the game, I guess that means. Just be relaxed. Most of the work you're gonna be doing is with primary school kids, maybe some secondary kids. They're gonna be leaning on you for leadership. They don't wanna see you frazzled. They don't wanna see you really tense and non-communicable. They wanna speak. They wanna learn from you while you're officiating their games. How are we going? One more question, then we'll, then we'll, we'll, we'll move on. What makes an umpire a good umpire? Let's talk, you don't need to write, let's talk. Let's engage each other. And, and we, we've discussed a little bit of this in other, other couple of slides. Honesty, I think someone said. Relationship with the players. Yep, absolutely. 
we had that L word mentioned earlier. I think you called it an R word. That's okay. Laws. Laws. laws yeah. Oh, laws. Yeah. What else? Use some words on the previous couple of slides. Conflict. Yeah. Consistent. Pardon? Consistency. So, at community level now, oh, despite whatever level, knowledge of the laws, paramount. So if you're going into a primary school that play VPSSA laws, you're going to need to know what happens if the ball spills out of bounds, because there are no boundary umpires in those games. So knowledge of the local laws, critically important. This document here that I'll pass out later on is called the Spirit of the Laws. <coughs> This is not the 146 page law book. This is a simple A4 document that lists six spirit of the laws. Basically it tells us how we should implement the major and the most commonly used laws of the game. I think you've read through the other ones. Yeah. Critically important, how accurate our decisions are. AFL guys get marked on their decisional accuracy. They rate at about 85 to 86 percent throughout a given year. They're not perfect. No one's perfect. I tell you what, if you get 85 percent of your decisions accurate throughout this year, at whatever level you're umpiring, that'd be cool. That leads to that. So if you position yourself effectively, as will be my key ingredient outside in a few minutes, if we position ourselves effectively, side onto the play, it might increase our percentage of decisional accuracy because we're actually in that effective decision making position. Out there, we say 25 metres side onto each contest as a field umpire. Good wide field of vision, good wide broad view of the marking contest, any infringements that may, may occur. Let's rip it down to you guys now. So let, let's move away from the elite and bring it back to local level or school level really encourage you to value the individual in the sport. And that could be a participant in one of your games that has an irregular body shape, or maybe um, some sort of, pardon me, some sort of physical disability, possibly, who's out there having a crack that's got nowhere near the ball. So creatively, how can we get that person involved? whilst maintaining that, or thereabouts. I think the last two make sense. So out of all those bullet points I've shared with you, see it, did you see it? There, there's one missing, and it's probably the most important ingredient in our role as umpires, because we've got laws to protect head high contact, we've got laws to protect the trip, We've now got laws to protect the sling tackle. Say it again. Yeah. Our main role out there, our first and foremost job description is to protect the players. And we can do that by working really hard and getting into that effective decision-making position and getting our decisions accurate. We normally protect the player, he or she, who is making the ball their sole objective. It's contained here. I'll send you away with one of those shortly. So GDO now, not AFL, not local footy, you as an umpire. Oh, no, no, we'll come back to that. I actually put my grand denier hat on for a moment. I surveyed a studio audience, which was our AFL Vic staff a couple of years ago, and I've asked AFL Vic staff members to list obvious and necessary competencies that umpires should exhibit. Have a look at the list they came up with. Pretty much all of which we've covered today. And I asked them to come back with a one, two and three. One being the most important, two being second most, third being still critically important, but maybe third ranked. Have a guess what you reckon the most popular responses were as competency number one. Impartial. 
And like we could argue for half an hour what these next what this next slide's gonna show. So just form in your opinion. I've oh, yeah, I've highlighted five and you've probably seen them. Five competencies that the AFL Vic staff at the time, a couple of years ago, thought were the most critical in terms of our role and their role in officiating a game of footy. They were those ones. And I, I, I'm not saying that they're, they're accurate, but I thought that was interesting to say that, yeah, absolutely, I think we all agree on that. Yeah, I think you agree on that. Three of the C words that we listed earlier, I've got to mention. We could argue it. You could debate why that one's not in the top five, and that's okay. And, and you're, you're entitled to your opinion, but I just thought I'd show you some evidence of a, of a survey that was conducted a couple of years ago. I wonder if I ask the staff now whether their responses would still be the same. Three or four slides to go, then we're outside, everyone. Let's talk about you now. You. First gig has pretended to grade five, six interleague game of footy. Primary school level, obviously. You've read the VPSSA laws of the game. You now know that if the ball spills out of bounds by foot, it's a free kick to the opposition. You know that it spills off hands, you bring it in five metres as per Oz kick and do a ball up. You're pretty prepared. What qualities are the kids and the two teachers who are acting as coaches going to expect of you? Enthusiasm. Pardon? Enthusiasm, they mm -hmm. get both of the kids. Friendly. Yeah, approachable and friendly, my word. Come on, lots of contributions from this group. <coughs> Not dozing off down the back there, are we? <laughs> Anyone? You know, the, you know the laws? Yeah, yeah, confidently. Being able to share the rules with everyone? If needed, yeah. So use the opportunity to do some coaching too. No, you've got, you've got him or her above the shoulder. That's a head high free kick. Let's be very careful of those from the on kids. Right. That they have their equipment ready. Mm -hmm. Like their whistle. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys? Yeah. yeah. My word. Might have even done a bit of a warm up. Keeping the players safe and like safe environment. To... That's it. You've, you've jumped ahead, haven't you? Value the individual in the sport. I was umpiring a game on ANZ Stadium years ago. Not as an AFL umpire, but as a, a half-time Oz kick umpire. And there was this kid down the back that was, I think, counting the number of planes that went overhead throughout the game. And I could hear him say, Ansett 1, Philippine Airlines 2, or something like that. Like, I was busy, but I heard that in the background. He was bespeckled, and that was okay. But I know that he hadn't had a kick. And I know all the other kids had dominated the play. They'd all had tons of possessions in the 14 minutes allocated. And I reckon I made my best ever umpiring decision in all my career by being a little bit creative by giving this young kid a kick. Because I know that up in the grandstand somewhere would have been family members focused solely on him. And the fact that he wasn't moving, that he was doing this. Helicopter, you know, things like that. Got him involved in the game. And I reckon his parents would have patted him on the back for that one kick, even though it did dribble out of bounds. But at least he had a kick. So we've got to value the individual in sport. It's not, we're not playing for sheep stations. Despite these kids thinking they are, they're not. They're playing to have fun. I want to see you have fun too. Spirit of the laws, you're going to need to do that. Little document I'll pass out later. They're going to need to see you having fun. Because if you're not, if you're all tense and worked up, that becomes infectious. There's a barrier straight away between player to umpire relationships. So get there early, introduce yourself. And if you get an opportunity to sit down with the kids and say, these aren't the laws that I'm gonna to use today, but these are the laws of our game. They will be used right throughout the rest of the season by your umpires. And my name's Jack or my name's Sarah, you know? Be really, really approachable. You nailed the word, or someone nailed the word, the most important word, as, as was shared earlier. Protect the players. Sounds like I'm really pumping up the role of the umpire. Sort of in a way I am, because I'm sort of biased. But I just need you to focus on this before we head outside. 
this is not the AFL point of view, this is my point of view. So this is Russell's point of view. And I call it my interactive isosceles triangle. Because from that interactive isosceles triangle, you've got three components that depend on each other to function. They're the stars. They're the stars of the show. So let's let them play footy. They're the educators. Massive role to play. Massive role. Respect their role. And let's be pretty humble about our role. It's not about us. I don't know whether Razor would agree with that, but it's not about us. It's about these guys and girls who are the stars of the game. We're just out there to provide a safe workplace for them. Does that make sense? So let's strip it down to your level. There's that interactive isosceles triangle. Where do we fit in as GDOs? We might be umpiring girls footy. Might be umpiring diversity footy. And that is just so, so cool because these kids just love the game. We might be assisting a phys ed teacher running an Auskick session or a phys ed session as a, at a clinic. We might be out on the middle of the MCG running part of our AFL nines or Auskick. There's the AFL nines that you did with Owen this morning. They're the Auskick coaches. They're the school teachers. Let them instruct. Our role is to merely support the players. That makes sense? Three sides of the triangle. I reckon if any side were to fall down, so too would the game. Yeah? The players are thinking of striking in the JLT series coming up. If that happens, the game might take a break for a while. If the coaches ever go out on strike, interactive triangle depends on all three corners for, for engagement. But do remember, it's all about these guys and girls. Yeah? They're the stars. So let's provide them with a safe workplace or a safe environment to demonstrate their skills. Two tips, and only two. Now, I've got these for you on a hand here. Don't watch Friday Night Footy where we get the really elite players coached by some of the best educators in the land, often umpired by the best guys and girls who are at the peak of their game week by week. Because if we watch them, we're gonna have expectations that the next game we umpire, the kids or the, adult, or, or the adults or the youths will possess that same skill set. They're not gonna. No school teacher will have the nows of Paul Ruse or Ross Lyon, where the defensive flooding tactics or the transition that the guys out here are doing. None of us will be in that effective decision-making position like Matt Stevick or Ray Chamberlain or Jacob Bollison. So understand the level of the game you're involved with. And I ask you to demonstrate that when we're out there in three or four minutes time, just do your job as you need to. Do it with confidence. Let the players play the game. Will that make sense? I'm going to show you this one, then I'm going to show you what we're going to do outside. This goes for about 20 seconds. This is called Get In The Game. So we've gone from a promo seven years ago to a program that's current at the moment. It's now played on the TV screens and on Channel 7 and Foxtel um, to promote our role in this fantastic game that you're now entering 
as an employee of AFL Victoria, which is pretty darn cool.